Hello and welcome back to our channel. I am Emily Brady, co-owner and designer at Rustic Passion Studio and today I'm bringing you a new type of tutorial featuring a flower pot tumbler sleeve from Dimensional Drinks as well as a handle and these are 3D products that are made to go right over top of your tumblers. So let's get started. I am first going to glue my handle onto my tumbler. Now this is when they're kind of straight out of the box and I'm just using some fast set epoxy and putting it right on my handle and then the flower pot sleeve kind of has a seam on it so i'm just going to use that to align the handle straight up and down and that way i make sure that it is going to be perfectly vertical when it's standing up and not going to be off to the side i did make sure i had enough epoxy on the bottom part there and then i just kind of smoothed out any extra that squished out of the sides and i made sure to push the handle all the way towards the top of the tumbler sleeve this is the square handle they also so have a rounded handle option as well and then i'm just going to let this sit here for a couple hours until it is cured and ready to move on to the next step now once that is all the handle is on there i'm going to attach my tumbler to the flower pot sleeve i got this as the bundle and i believe this is a 16 ounce plump from the tipsy magnolia and again i'm going to go in with my fast set epoxy and i'm going to do this kind of like i am applying glitter so i'm not going to use too much epoxy but i'm going to spread that all over the tumbler and make sure that it is completely coated and once i have the epoxy all on there then i'm just going to slide my sleeve directly onto the tumbler and i'm just going to have it flush at the bottom so i'm going to set it down on a level surface so that it will be um, all connected and adhered and then in a couple hours after that is dried you can see here i have actually gone in and spray painted this i took it out and i used smoky beige rust-oleum and gave it a couple good coats of spray paint to put my glitter on and i'm going to be using my adhesive apothecary thick glitter glue to apply this and this brush is just one of my own that you can um, get in my etsy shop and i'm going to be going in with the color nude from pdb creative studio and i will have all the products that i am using linked down below in the description box and you can see here i'm going slow just to kind of show you that i am making sure that every little part of this is covered in glue so that my glitter can adhere perfectly now i did remove the bottom of this tumbler so that we could do something fun to it later so with these cups they just have a little inset that I used a uh, screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and a hammer just to kind of get that popped out of there. So I don't need to worry about getting glitter inside of the bottom, but I do want to make sure I get it over the edge and on that bottom rim. And then make sure you get the top and all around the handle and everywhere so that it is fully covered in the glitter. And then once that is done, I'm going to go in again with Nude from PDB and cover my entire tumbler in this. And I do not show you my epoxy process just because it's um, typical of a tumbler you would do. There's not a ton of grooves on this, so it's pretty simple. I just do really light coats so that it does not pool around the handle. And here I missed a couple spots on that handle, so I just go in while the glue is still wet and apply a little bit more to get the glitter all covered on there. Now, once I did this, you don't need to seal it just because this is a fine glitter and it's all one color, but you could use a spray sealant or some kind of sealant if you would like. Now I'm going to move in and we're going to be hand painting this. So I'm using my Papa Color Paints found over at Counterculture DIY. I'm using Deep Blush, Terracotta, and Beige. I believe beige has been discontinued, but they do have a lot of light colors such as wet sand, but you could really use any colors that you would like. I prefer to paint with the chalk paints just because they are nice and thick and a lot of times you only need one coat and they are covered. You can see here this is the deep blush and it really does cover so well. I also sanded my cup before I got started so that there wouldn't be any little bumps coming up underneath of my paint. Now when I do paint, I want to make sure I get the bottom rim, if I'm painting over it, coated as well as also on the top so if i'm going to be doing any shapes on the top i will make sure to go up over all of those little ridges so that we get it covered and first i'm going to go in this is a super simple project that anyone could do i'm just going to base coat it with circles and different <laughs> bean shape just basically putting blobs all over the tumbler i'm going to do two to three of each color that i am using so here uh, you can see I'm going over the rim and I'm just going nice and slow to make sure I get even lines as I move along. 
And if you get any brush strokes, just make sure to kind of fill them in like you can see right there. Or you could go back and because this is a chalk paint, if you get any splatters or if you don't like something, you can, um, the splatters, you can kind of just scrape up. They'll pop right off once they are dried. Or if you really don't like it and you want to start over, they are water-based. So you can just go rinse it out, let it soak for a little bit to get wet, and then wipe it off and start over. If any spots kind of stick particularly good because you sanded the tumbler, you could just wet sand it again and get that to come off. So we'll speed this up a little bit. And you will see here, I'm going to do one more little circle of this color and then I will move on to my other two colors. The brushes I'm using are also just a round brush. You could use any round brush that you would like that you prefer to paint with. And then also the beige when I get to that color is a little bit thinner. So I do go in and do a second coat on that color. Now when you're applying a second coat or when we move on to the next phase, you want to make sure that your paint is completely dry before you move on. Otherwise it's just going to lift it up and it will not make any progress. So just make sure it's dry. You can use a heat gun to speed it up, but really don't get it too hot or you will get a lot of cracks in your paint. So let it dry naturally or slowly kind of speed the process up. Even holding it in front of a, in front of a cool fan can help as well. And you can see here, I'm just going to try to vary my sizes and the shapes and different heights around the tumbler. I don't want similar colors all right next to each other, but I also don't um, want them all the same size or the same shape. So I'm trying to vary that up. And here I'm going in with that second coat. I did let that first coat fully dry, and then I'm going to go in with that second one. Now I'm going to move on. I started with all these circular blobs, and then I'm going to move on with some kind of stripes. So we'll slow down to take a look at this. This is very organic. Going under the handle can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going in with my round brush again and just letting it flatten out and making some, we'll just call them squiggles. <laughs> and you want to make sure those paint blobs underneath are fully dry as well. Otherwise, you'll just be lifting that paint up and spreading it around together. And make sure you get it under that rim fully. And then this is going to adhere and go to the top of the cup as well as when I'm done with this, I'm going to wrap it around to the bottom also. Now, when you're doing these lines, you want to make sure you're putting them over top of colors that are not the same color that you're using or else they will just blend together. So make sure you vary it up. Now, if you find any spots that you feel are just kind of bare or maybe they need a little bit of the one of the other colors in there, feel free to go back in and add those in as you work. So I'm doing another circle here just because you can see there's a lot of that terracotta color and the beige, but there wasn't a lot of this deeper blush brown color. So I wanted to add in one more spot there before I moved on with more stripes. Since we are hand painting this tumbler, it is a slower process, but definitely just trust the process. At first, you can see this kind of just looks like some weird glitter cup with a bunch of shapes on it, but we're going to be adding a lot more elements to it and some bright golds that are really going to bring it out. 
Now here you can see I didn't let my brown fully dry, so my beige did pull some of that into there. So I'm going to try to thin that out with adding a little bit more to it. Sometimes that can create a unique look. It really just depends on what you are going for. But I was impatient. <laughs> so keep on adding all of your lines until you are happy with how it looks. You do not need to fill the entire tumbler up because we will be adding some leaves and like I said, some more elements to it. So you don't want it to be overly super busy, but you do want it just to, to look equal and well balanced. If there's anything that looks a little too heavy or maybe one side looks a little too light, just add in another little circle or stripe to kind of finish it off. And then we will move on to the next part of the process. After my paint fully dries, I'm going to go out and I sprayed it here with some triple thick Rust-Oleum spray paint. I'm avoiding doing too many layers of epoxy on this because I do not want to lose the rim to the flower pot or have too much pooling around the handle. So instead of putting epoxy on, I went in with the spray paint. Now I'm going to use my gold paint pen. You can find these at PDB Creative Studio as well. And these are the best pens I have found for the a true metallic color. And you have to press down this tip to get the inks to start flowing and to activate them. Just make sure you do that on a piece of paper and not on your cup in case it spills over and you have an accident. So this part might be a little intimidating, but really just go with it. You can see that first stem was just a wavy line and you can add that in anywhere you want on the cup. I just kind of started on one side and at the end of your wavy line, make kind of a teardrop shape. And then from there, we are gonna go down and you are just going to add a few, like a really short little branch coming out and add more teardrops onto those branches. Now these pens, you want to make sure you have enough ink flowing out to, um, to fully fill up that leaf. You can't really go back once they are dry to, to a second coat because it will just scratch the paint off. So make sure you get it coated very well on the first. That's why I'm kind of going over it a lot and pushing down on the tip. I think this pen hadn't been used in a little while, so I was really trying to get it activated, but on the second leaf branch, it really starts to work a lot better and then it fills it in some more. So just do that all the way down the cup. I'm alternating my leaves. You can have them come out straight across from each other. You could do two leaves per branch and also feel free to overlap some of those leaves as well. You do not need to be perfect on this. It's definitely just a very organic tumbler that we are making and just go with whatever feels right to you. So here I'm also adding on a second wavy branch to fill in that empty gap that was underneath of the handle there and then I'm going to do more leaves coming off of that. When you are happy with how that looks and you have all the leaves fill in, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. This time I'm coming down from the top of the tumbler and kind of just giving it a little bit of different direction to it. And I only do two branches on here just because it fills it up plenty enough. And we are gonna do some more little accents also. So make sure you get those leaves filled in. You can see my pen's working a lot better here. Once your leaves are all finished, we're going to move on to some of the little embellishments. Here I'm just doing little circles following some of the larger painted circles. And then you can do little spots, kind of like little cheetah spots. I just kind of randomly place them, overlapping some of the different colors and going into some of the glitter areas. And here I'm doing some more circles on the outside this time rather than on the in inside. And later, I didn't show it, but I ended up doing using the tip of this brush and just kind of doing 
little lines almost like stitching going along there and decided to put some more of those little spots up here after this is all done with the gold paint pen i am going to go seal this again i believe i used the triple thick from rust-oleum one more time over the gold and then i used a clear matte spray and i used the matte just so that when i go in here with my black paint pens it is going to adhere and not repel onto that glossy surface. So make sure your gold paint is completely dry before you seal anything in. And I typically use a Posca paint pen. This one here, um, I was out, so I'm using my Grabby acrylic marker. I think, in my opinion, the Posca is a deeper shade of true black once it's under epoxy, but it's definitely up to you. This is a very fine point. My Posca would be a 1M size that I use. And when I go over the flowers, I'm just going to trace everything. So I just do a little squiggle going down for that center stem. And then here you can see I'm just going to outline those teardrop shapes. Do not worry about this being perfect. You can go outside of the gold. You can go inside of it. You truly want it to just be an organic shape. And then to do the details inside of the flower, I start with a center vein going from the tip to the base of that. And then I'm going to add more little lines. And these are going to go all the way from the tip into the base again and just curve in between there. And you can see sometimes I only do a few lines, sometimes I do more. Just kind of depends on the shape of the leaf and totally personal preference for you. You could also just leave these as outlines and not add these in the middle or just add one line down the middle. And then on my little spots here I do a little half circle and I just kind of add that to look like a little shadow around of those then I'm going to do the leaf on the back and then I also will add in I think I did some little shadows around some of that little stitch marking lines you can see as well Then I decided I wanted to add a little bit more elements to this tumbler, so I'm gonna go in and do little dots just in the black, not the gold, just to kind of vary those elements up. And this will kind of give it just a lot more dimension to it. And I like to work in usually pairs of three. I don't do even numbers, typically always do an odd number, three or five, something like that. Here, my pen had splattered a little bit, so I just decided to add some more dots in there to cover that up. And then you can also go in and do something on your handle so that you don't just leave it blank. You can, I'm gonna go back with some gold and add some spots on there as well. So that way it just kind of blends in with the cup a lot smoother. After that, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna spray it just one more time with a clear matte spray so nothing repels and then I'm going to add my epoxy over top. Typically, I'm going to need two layers on that to make sure it's nice and smooth. I want my cup totally finished before we go in and do the bottom. Now, I'm going to be using my Counterculture DIY UV resin, and I'm going in with Fierce and Penny Lane from PDB Creative Studio. The glitters here, Penny Lane is retired now, so you could use something like Autumn. Um to find something a little bit closer and i'm going to apply the first glitter to that outer rim and i'm don't use a whole lot i would probably say less than 10 milliliters of uv you do not need to fill this up the whole way because i do like to have that rim in between the layers kind of show that cream color so that you kind of get a little bit more dimension to it and then i'm going to put the fierce color in the middle here and just kind of spread that out to the sides once i have all my uv in where i would like it i'm going to hit it with a torch just to kind of pop any bubbles and bring anything up to the surface and i think this one needed a little bit more glitter so i added just a tad bit more and then threw that in there and then after the torch i'm going to hit it with the UV lamp and let that cure. You wanna make sure it's cured really good. So I usually do a couple of minutes with my lamp and then I just take it outside if it is a sunny day and I'll let it sit there for like 10 minutes. If not, I will do this a few times with my lamp. After that's done, I go in and I sign my work with my signature I always do. I'm gonna use my black Posca pen here and then I wanted to do some accents with the gold pen as well. Just, just since that was on the tumbler, it would all kind of match in. Once I have my signature on there, I also do a little bit of a leafy vine. I go back in and I outline that with my black Posca. Just have fun with it and do whatever you want to do. Sometimes you can put one of those little logo tags in the bottom as well. And then again, let your inks dry. These don't take very long to dry, but before we seal it in, we want to make sure everything is nice and dry. So after that is on there and dry, I go in and just put the clear UV resin on the top and I make sure to get it all the way to the outer rim 
and fill it in enough in the center as well as going over that middle rim and then I will hit it with the torch again and the UV light. You can also just let it sit outside and finish curing just to make sure it is completely dry to the touch and is all done. After everything is all cured, we're just going to flip the tumbler over and clean off the top rim. Make sure you don't have any epoxy going in there. I'm just using my X-Acto knife. This is just a custom knife because everyone always asks me about it. It's a woodworking marking knife, actually. So I did have a lot of epoxy on the top of this rim, so I'm just going to make sure I cleanly cut that up. And you could also warm up your knife or use a hot knife so that it's... Um, will cut off smoother and then I will clean out the inside with some alcohol there's not much inside of this one and then add the lid and you are all done so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial with me this is a very simple kind of beginners painted cup that you could start with before we go into some more floral designs and things in the future check out the description box down below to get any of my products that I used here as well as a bunch of discount codes as well